Ten years later, ladies and gentlemen, Call of Duty World at War, to me, is the top five video game of all time. Even now, the multiplayer is an overall fun experience to go back and play. In fact, it's one of the damn few games or multiplayers that can put a smile on my face. Even to this day, I can't say many other games, especially the ones made recently, can put me in a good mood just by simply playing. I mean, they just do not make games like this anymore in terms of a non-complicated multiplayer. And let's not forget about the campaign. You know, the thing that Call of Duty was pretty much based off of when the franchise first started? Yeah, yeah, that thing that made the franchise a franchise to begin with? Oh yeah, I remember that. That was when Call of Duty was, well, Call of Duty. So anyways, World at War had a great campaign, a fun multiplayer, but it was never that popular. It did sell over 3 million copies in the first two months of its release. At that time, that was incredible. But because it got sandwiched in between of Call of Duty 4 in Modern Warfare 2, overall the sales were not as great that entire year because everybody wanted the Modern Warfare type of games at that particular time. So the game was hated on a bit more than usual because of that. I remember playing it at my buddy's house when it first came out, and I was the only person that wanted to play it that day. Everybody else wanted to go back and play Call of Duty 4 after just a few hours of playing World at War. Fast forward to more recent times. World at War became backwards compatible in the second half of 2016. Many thought just by making it backwards compatible that the player base would start playing it again, especially since it would be available to play on not one, but two different systems using the same players. Unfortunately, in terms of today's numbers, November 2018, 10 years later, World at War averages less than 2,000 players online on Xbox One and the 360 combined, and that is during the daytime. At night, the average is probably around 400 based off of what I have seen, not to mention at certain times of the night, those numbers can go below 150 or 200 players at certain times. And those numbers are the best out of PlayStation, PC, and Xbox. Simply because PC is overloaded with hackers, and PlayStation still, as of right now, only has World at War available on the last generation PS3 from a multiplayer perspective. So in other words, Xbox is the only platform keeping World at War alive, just barely. And even then, the hackers on Xbox have made it somewhat difficult to play this game. But that is nothing new because World at War has always had a problem with hackers ruining the game. Now as far as the future of this game, is there any hope for World at War? In its current state, I would have to say no. Backwards compatibility, in my opinion, was the short-term solution for Xbox. And even then, obviously that does not help the PlayStation or PC community. So anyways, as far as a long-term solution, the only other option is a remastered version. In terms of getting the player count back up, fixing the issues in-game, like in particular the map pack issue where it kicks you out if you don't have the map packs. You know, it's funny, I was actually hoping Treyarch would have given the map packs away for free for the 10 year anniversary of this game not too long ago, but yeah, that didn't happen. But anyways, this game has to be remastered, otherwise I don't see it lasting another 5 years, let alone another 10. And to me, that is completely unacceptable. This game should have been taken care of when it came to the things that needed to be fixed in-game. We're not even talking about the hacks. Just the things in-game. And there wasn't even that many things to fix. It was just one major issue with the DLC maps, and maybe three or four other small problems. And that was it. It would have been a damn near perfect game had some things just been patched. I wouldn't even need to talk about a remastered version had just a few things been fixed. So, a remastered version. I know it's a long shot now because Black Ops 4 came out instead this year, but I'm simply going to hope for the best because this game is worthy of being remastered at some point. And it does need to be available to the people who own a PS4. This is one of the all-time great games. It needs to be available and playable on every single platform and system. And World at War Remastered is the only way that is going to happen or just for the game to have a future. That all being said, here are the top things that need to be considered, removed, fixed, changed, or added in World at War Remastered, if it ever does happen. 
So the rifle grenade needs to be nerfed, a kill cam needs to be added, dedicated servers are definitely needed to fix the issue of when the host ends up leaving mid-game and it ends the entire match. Call of Duty 4 had the same problem. This particular issue is probably the second biggest on the game, next to the map pack glitch, which I already mentioned. As far as weapons, there is only one thing that needs to be changed, and that is nerf the hell out of the MP40. The only gun that needs to be nerfed in Call of Duty World at War is the MP40, which is the most overused, overpowered gun in the history of this game. It takes absolutely no skill to use whatsoever, and people spam the hell out of it. It's all some people use. So it needs to be nerfed big time. And as far as perks go, removing Juggernaut and also Marty Dom would be another step in the right direction. This is not Call of Duty 4. I didn't want those as perks in World at War. Hell, I didn't want them as perks in Call of Duty 4 or Modern Warfare Remastered either. But this is not Call of Duty 4. Those two things did not need to be copied from that game. World at War is its own game, plain and simple. So at the very least, both of those perks need to be nerfed because both are overused and overpowered. And honestly, both perks just bail out the bad players just like the MP40. Marty Dom in particular should be a death streak, not a perk. But there are no death streaks on World at War, so my vote goes to removing that in particular off of the game entirely. Also, another thing to consider is the kill streaks. The artillery strike needs to be buffed up or come into play faster after you call it in. Also, I don't think the artillery should stop teammates from running. No friendly kill streak should have any negative effect on teammates. And the dogs? The dogs should have a one hit kill bite, not two. This is the highest kill streak in the game. It should be a little bit better, in my opinion. Another thing I wanted to mention is potentially adding a nuke as a kill streak. The first ever atom bomb would be a nice addition. When this game first came out 10 years ago, I was hoping it would be in the game as a 25 kill streak or something. Unfortunately, that did not happen. And the last possibility or idea I wanted to throw out here is the same thing I listed in my MW2 Remastered video. Throwing in a wildcard slot for an extra perk, this would have worked out so nicely on some of the older Call of Duty games. It is something that I feel was completely needed on this game in particular because the first perk or blue perk category had eight different perks. The second or red category had ten different perks, which included stopping power and juggernaut, so hardly any other perk was going to be used from that category. And finally, the third yellow perk category had 10 different perks as well. So altogether, we are talking about 28 different perks on the game, and you only get three of those in total on World at War, not counting the vehicle perk category. So in my mind, having a wildcard slot, or even two on this game, could have definitely made a big difference, and would have offered more options to play with, and could have made the game better overall. But some of these things I just mentioned are without question needed, and some are just ideas or possibilities. But bottom line, this game should remain mostly the same. No new weapons should be added to the game like what happened in Modern Campfire Remastered. Adding 15 new weapons to that multiplayer on that game was a very interesting decision to say the least, and I hope that in particular doesn't happen to this game. But nobody knows if World at War is going to have a future or not. No one knows if this game is going to get remastered. The only thing us as players can do as of right now is keep the conversation going about this once in a generation type of game. The more people that mention this game on social media, that talk about it, or even play it, gives a remastered version an increased chance of happening. Anyways, I'm going to call it right there. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Happy 10 year anniversary World at War. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I will see you next time. Peace.